Modern Horizons 2 has the greatest elf card ever printed. I am, of course, talking about Yavimaya. Although it is not an elf, it completely changes elf decks. We'll get to why in a second. Now, elf decks, they're great at ramping. We can go turn one Heritage Druid, turn two Elite, make a token, and tap those three creatures to make three mana on turn two. No other modern deck has ramp that is that explosive. But now, here's the problem with elf decks. We get a ton of mana, we dump our hand, but then what? Although we have a ton of weenies, if our opponent has any blockers, then they're pretty useless. Which is why elf decks normally take a ton of time to set up. Because you spend the whole game queefing out little creatures in hopes that you find a Zuri, which allows you to buff your little dudes and swing in for the win. But that takes so much time. It's not only boring, but by the time we actually pop off, our opponent's probably already won. Now here is where Yavi Maya comes in. Because all lands are forced, including our opponents, Forest Walk is very, very good. For only three mana, it's a 2-2. That gives our else plus one plus one and Forest Walk. With Yavi Maya, all of our creatures are unblockable, and this means we don't have to wait to attack and we can start shipping away very early, which makes elves much more consistent and much, much faster. And what's even better, thanks to Yavi Maya, it's worth it to run Mutavolt. Mutavolt has all creature types, so it's insane in tribal decks, which is why Merfolk decks always run four, despite having a ton of cards with double blue in the mana cost. Sadly, elf decks have not been able to do the same. Firstly, because elves does not run Nathar Vile, and secondly, Colorus is not so great when you have a ton of weenies requiring green. But with Yavimaya, Mutavolt now produces green, and it's so worth it. Mutavolt works with Heritage, Dwayne's Elite, gets buffed by all the lords, and even if our opponent board wipes us, Mutavolt survives. Now, worst case scenario, we have a one land hand with Mutavolt forcing us to mulligan, but it speeds up our clock so much that is totally worth it. But we also have another Modern Horizons 2 card, Endurance. It has Flash, it has Reach, it gets rid of our opponent's graveyard, and if we don't want to pay three mana, we can still get rid of our opponent's graveyard by exiling green card from hand. Graveyard decks are a horrible matchup for elves because graveyard decks tend to be really fast, which is why, although Endurance is not an elf, we're still running two in the main deck. Also, the Flash works really well with Forest Walk because when we tap to attack our opponent, the logical thing for them to do is attack us back, which, much to our opponent's horror, we can flash in Endurance to block. The rest of the main deck is exactly what you'd expect. Our shooter can make a nut ton of mana, Clan Caller can find other Clan Callers, or Master makes tokens, and it can buff our elves and give Death Touch. Sentinel and Taps when we play Green Spell, and we have the Horizon Lands, which also work very well with the Avamaya because instead of paying one life, we can make green instead with no drawback. Now on the sideboard, we have Creature Hate, Removal Hate, more Graveyard Hate, Artifact Enchantment Hate, and Tron and Storm Hate. That is the deck. Now let's get to the gameplay. But first, I painted more deck boxes. They are extra large, fitting just over 100 double sleeve cards. And look at those colors, aren't they amazing? They are available at decknight.com. And now here's a gameplay. Opening hand, no green source, so we're gonna have to mull. And yeah, this is pretty good. We're gonna keep. Try for the heritage. So far, so good. Should we go for the elite? Eh, we'll risk it. No! Play Warmaster. Oh, we'll on a Snapcaster. Pull another land. Swing for two. Double Mystic. And pass back. We'll pump his land on tap. Very suspicious. Play Nettle. And at the end of our turn, Restoration Angel. We'll pray they don't have Force Negation. And go collect a company. Our shoot an elite. Nice. All but a path of exile. And a seasoned pyromancer. Oh, <laughs> dumping two counter spells. Yavi Maya, okay. But without any lords, I don't really want to attack here. Play Mystic and pass back. Oh, why? Opponent swing with everything. Does that mean they have board wipe? Oh, block the two tokens. I'm surprised. Swing for two. Heritage. I was trying to rebuild. I'm play as a Colonnade. And I can also make two tokens. Oh, but perfect. Champion. And now they have Forest Walk. Oh, I want to make two tokens to try and block. And they're like, what? Why can't I block? So as long as Champion stays alive, we're looking pretty good. On passes. Endurance, okay. And make me to vault. Swing for five. Oh, what? They're fetching? Or are they, what? No, they're not doing? Ah, I'm so confused. Oh, Snapcaster. Trying to flashback Path to Exile, but Endurance. So no graveyard for them. And there's Lethal. Not really sure why they fetched there. I think they'd originally planned to block with Colonnade. And then when they realized they couldn't, they were like, oh shoot, Snapcaster instead. But that was pretty gangster. I'm going into game tools. We're going to Sanctuary and Uzzism without. Let's go to game two. Opening hand, we have Cavern, so we're going to keep. Play Mystic. On passes. We'll play Archerud. Oh, what a Helix. On passes again. Instead of Archerud, let's go Lanor and Elite. I just pray they don't have Board Wipe. Pyromancer. Dumping a path and counter spell. Why would they dump a path? Unless they did have Board Wipe. I mean, we kind of have to walk into it. Plan Color. Elite. Swing for five. On blocks like that. But do they have the wipe? Yep. Time to rebuild. Archdruid. Opponent passes. Now let's try War Master. Make two mana, three champion. They could counter this. If they don't, interesting. Well, if they have a second board wipe, then we really are screwed. But no, Lightning Bolt. Oh, and a Snapcaster. Flashing back a bolt. Pull Ooze. Oh, we can't make it uncounterable. Eh, we'll go for it. Ooze. And what? They still have counter. They even sideboard out any of it. Oh my gosh. All right, swing for one. And a path. Oh. I think at this point, there's no coming back. So we'll keep the rest of our deck a secret and go to game three. I'm going into game three now that we know they kept in their counter. We'll dump the Oozes and bring back in these hoes and without. Let's go to game three. Opening hand. No Sanctuary. No Green Source. So we're gonna mull. And yeah, sure, we'll keep this. Lenoir. Oh, a bowl. Land. Play War Master. And back opponent. Oh, it passes. And we draw a cavern. Okay. Swing for two. And we'll endurance now. I bet they didn't expect that. Oh, and Pyromancer. Dumping two lands, but getting no tokens. Why'd they do that? Unless they have board wipe again. Yikes, do we pop off or just hold back? I mean, we do have endurance. Put a little bit of pressure on them. Okay, here's what we'll do. Swing for three. And we'll see if they have the wipe here. Huh. Nothing. That is really suspicious. But this time we'll play it safe. Swing for three. And what? They're pathing our War Master? Does that mean they don't have a wipe? And why wouldn't they just path the endurance, right? If they're using removal on War Master, then I take it they don't have wipe in hand. So in that case, company, land color, and heritage. We get a token. Maybe they have Snapcaster here. Yeah, that makes sense. That's probably what their turn three play was supposed to be before we exile their graveyard. And ooh, they're going after our lord. Okay, upon takes three. We'll make three mana. Play War Master and pass it back. One
to try and bamboozle our opponent with War Master's Death Touch ability. So play the Elite, get two tokens, and swing with everyone except for Lanoir. They're forced to block here, and I don't think they realize we have the ability. Either that, they have board wipe in hand. And let's go for it. Three mana here, six, seven, activate. Opponent goes to two. Do they have the wipe though? Shit! Uh, never ends. Uh, heritage. Archdruid. Oh my gosh! Lanoir will draw a card. Archdruid. Play the Archdruid. Swing for two. They make two tokens. We lose heritage. Opponent passes. This time I have Colonnade. I mean, about nice. So we'll draw. Champion. Very good. So play Lanoir. Champion. And now can it end? Oh, praise the magic gods. <laughs> that was terrible. But somehow we managed to win, even though we didn't draw any shape or sanctuaries. And that's pretty epic. So the next match. Opening hand is pretty sexy. So we're gonna keep Nettle. Oh, and it's a Yogmoth deck. How interesting. Okay, swing for two. And play Heritage. Heritage. And Archdruid. One plays Wall Roots. And another land. Might as well swing with everyone. Upon chumps. Goes down to 13 and it's back to them. What is this? Court of Calling. Getting a land. They play birds. And it looks like another Court of Calling. Yep. Finding Grice. That's pretty interesting. They can sacrifice a creature. Destroy one of ours. Yeah. But now we can do this. Mutable. Do it, Grice. One at them. And what? They're blocking? But we have Pendlehaven. Okay. Untap Nettle. And back to opponent. Opponent plays Cutthroat. And plays Eldritch Evolution. Finding the Yogmoth. So they can sacrifice a creature. Put a minus one counter on another creature. And they draw a card. And it's a new Hierarch. That's pretty gangster. This would be pretty risky. With the Yogmoth to block, we can't do much here with an attack. So I think the safest option, keep Pendlehaven at the ready and send it back. Shoot. Young Wolf. They sack it. Putting a minus one counter on Archdruid. They sack their other creature. Put a minus one counter on Wolf. And there is a Messenger. So they have infinite. Because they can put minus one counters on one, then the other. Negating the plus one counter and dying goes infinite. And we're going to game two. I'm going into game two. Let's bring in some graveyard stuff and dismember. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand a little risky. But turn one Heritage Druid is very nice. So we're going to keep. Oh, an opponent's passing. Very concerning. Try for Elite. Oh, when it hits. Okay. Make three mana. Another Elite. Mystic. Make three more mana. And Lanoir. How explosive was that? Upon place of Patra. Whenever they place minus one counter on something, they get a 1 1 Death Touch token. Oh, and look at that. Let's first go Company. We'll go War Master and Clan Caller. And tap these three hoes for Champion. Oh, and there's a Concede. So we're going to game three. Opening hand, one land. But if we can pull a second one, we have a chance repeating last game. So we're going to keep. I'm going to Essence Warden. And nice, a land. Play Heritage and Pass. Play Wall Roots. They swing for one. But now time to pop off. Elite. The life game's going to be annoying. Make three mana. Nettle and Elite. Three more mana. And Champion. And now we back to opponent. Upon place of Patra again. And suspiciously, they pass back. Very suspicious indeed. Oh, good, okay. First play Mystic. Make three mana. Clan Caller and Clan Caller. Sadly, no force for opponent. But a wall big spank. And why they don't block? They go down to five. What is happening? Either they straight up lose or they straight up win. Word of calling for Yogmoth. They just go infinite. Wait a minute. Oh my god. Because life gain happens when a creature enters. They lose one life from the ability, but the life gain offsets that. Well, this was unexpected. Where'd all of our creatures go? Yep, they have us. What a shocking turn of events. But now we're on to the next match. Opening hand is very explosive, so we're gonna keep. Opponent be ramping. We draw Mystic, but as long as our opponent doesn't have removal, turn one heritage is very good. Oh, an opponent's an enchantment deck. This shall be interesting. Oh, and they do have removal. Taking out heritage. Full our should. And we'll play Lanoir. Heritage again. And pass back. Opponent plays an enchantment creature. And they're attacking. Okay. We pull Clan Caller. And we shall play Elite, making a token. Now with Heritage, tap all three. Or Mystic. Oh, what? Fine. Well, with three mana, Mystic, Clan Caller. And we'll pass it back. Enchantress is Presence. Another new card to Modern. And what? They're playing another one of these, but it's legendary. So one's going to go to Jesus. But they probably just wanted the card draw. Another Archdruid. So here's what we'll do. Play one. And swing at these three hoes. And what? Opponent jumps. Okay. Very strange. Oh, because opponent has another one. They can animate a land, so we have to watch out for that. Oh, another Enchantress of Presence. So much card draws. So when they play an enchantment, they'll draw three cards. And they play Arbor Elf. We get a War Master. We'll play the War Master. Then make eight mana. Archdruid. War Master makes a token. And for one extra mana, activate Clan Caller. Grabbing another Lord. And swing for a nut load. Opponent jumps two of them. Going down to seven. Okay, back to opponent. Oh my gosh. Another new card modern. This one's actually pretty good. Basically, we just lose here because it says prevent all damage we dealt to them. They skip the draw and they have to discard a card every turn. But because they're drawing three spells for every enchantment, they aren't gonna run out of cards. And therefore they just hard lock us. So we're gonna have to go to game two. Going into game two, we're bringing an enchantment heat. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand looks pretty good, so we're gonna Keep. Mystic and Pom plays Utopia. Mutable Vault, nice. So War Master, Nettle, and back to our opponent. Opponent plays Sanctum Weaver. It makes mana equal number and enchantments they have. And it'd be time to put the pressure on our opponent. Our Druid. Swing for 10. Oh, and opponent takes it. Opponent plays Presence again. Which means it can make three mana here. One is for Ant and Ice, taking out the Arch Druid. And nice Reclamation Sage. That should do it. Take out Ant and Ice. We get our Lord back and our opponent concedes. So we're going to game three. Opening hand, no green source, so we're gonna have to mole. And this would be a bit risky. But we'll keep. That's not a land. Oh well, play Lanowar. And opponent plays the Sphincter Weaver again. And nice a land. We'll risk it and play the Arch and pass it back. And change his presence again. And another Sphincter Weaver. And this Reclamation Sage. Time to pop off. Elite. Make four mana. War Master. And with another three mana, play the Sage, taking out this hoe. And we'll send it back to opponent. Oh, what is this? Sterling Grove. It gives their other enchantments Shroud. And they can sack it to find an enchantment. Very good with Solitary Confinement. And what? They sack it? Putting an enchantment on top of their library. Finding Solitary Confinement. Oh, and perfect. We just win. Champion. Giving Forest Walk Company. Our Sturd and Sage. And what a finish. So it'll be on to the next match. Opening hand. No turn one play. So we'll mole. And yeah, that was pretty good. Now we'll hold on to endurance just in case. Play heritage. Oh, and 
be a Tron deck. Interesting. Play Elite. It should go Champion or Endurance. Eh, let's just Endurance now. And back to opponent. Oh, next turn they'll have Tron active. That's pretty stinky. Arch Druid. They don't have blockers, so why not? Opponent cracks them out. And we spank for 10. So what will they do with their Tron lands? No! Oh my gosh. I was hoping for Karn. There goes our board. All right, Champion. Opponent plays map. And Mer Battlesphere. Mostly to get the tokens. Mead Vault. Cool. Play Clan Caller. And pass back. Oh, Bazoogan. Oh my gosh. Fine. We're going to game two. I'm going into game two. We're bringing Reclamation Sage and Damping Sphere. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand. Nothing special. Old key. Play Mystic. And opponent plays map. We pull Lanowar. And we'll play Arch Druid. Facial Contorsion. They take out our Arch Druid. But Heritage. Nice. Dump. And dump. And we back our opponent. Ah, uh, opponent has Tron without even using the map. Okay. And they put a Blast on in hand. Okay. We're getting pretty desperate here. Draw. Collected Company. Not bad. Play another Heritage. Swing for three. Opponent cracks a map. Grabbing an island. They keep Blast on at the ready. Collect Company. Grabbing two Lords. Cradle. Cool. Draw a card. Ooh, and an Arch Druid. They're probably going to fire the Blast on here. So make three mana. Arch Druid. And does our opponent have an answer to this? And nope. So we're going to game three. Opening hand. Not the most explosive. No damping sphere. Eh, we'll try it. One plays the map. Land. And we'll play Mystic. One plays Halsman. Meh. Arch Druid. And pass it back. They crack the map. Grabbing a mine. And another map. No. I suppose draw. No. Fine. Clan Caller. And then make three mana for another Arch Druid. Okay. Back to opponent. Opponent cracks the map. Tron's online. And there goes our butt cheeks. Dang. Could anything else have gone wrong here? And yep. Ugin. They can make a token every turn. Destroy permanent. And Worm Coil. Yep. They have us pinned. Very tragic. So final thoughts. It feels very distinct compared to other elf decks. But at the end of the day, if opponent's jamming board wipe or they're a fast combo deck, we can't really do much. All the graver decks no longer a problem. So we do have a lot of good matchups, but as usual with elves, there are just some matchups that we can't win. So if you're trying to win a tournament, I'd probably go with a different deck. But for like Friday Night Magic, this deck I think would be a lot of fun. And that concludes this video. Here is the final winner of the Strixhaven card and deck box giveaway. If all goes well, there'll be another giveaway very soon, depending on how many deck boxes sell. Look at them, they're so beautiful. So be sure to subscribe and check back very, very soon. And as always, I hope you have a great day.